What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the M2 Ultra Mac Studio. Of course, if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button as we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, then be sure to hit that subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when any of my new videos go live. Also, while you're at it, why not follow me on my social media? I'll leave my Instagram link down below. Go and check it out. There's quite a lot that I upload. And in fact, I'm uploading videos every single day on my Instagram. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So the first benchmarking application which I ran on this Mac Studio was from Geekbench. The first of these being Geekbench 4. So Geekbench 4 is a slightly older test, but it should allow you to draw comparison between this Mac Studio and other devices. So the first test that I ran was of course the CPU test. Now when running the CPU test, I got a single core score of 7039 with a multi-core score of 74148. I then ran the Geekbench 4 compute test. Now starting off with their OpenCL test, I got a score of 385,770. And when running the metal test, I got a score of 314,627. I then ran a slightly newer version of Geekbench, Geekbench 5. Now when running Geekbench 5 CPU test, I got a single core score of 1,462, along with a multi-core score of 21,757. When running the OpenCL compute test through Geekbench 5, I got a score of 95,259 and I got a metal score of 114,399. Of course, I ran the latest version of Geekbench, Geekbench 6. And when running the CPU test through Geekbench 6, I got a single core score of 2,713 with a multi-core score of 21,151. I then ran the OpenCL compute test and got scores of 117,353. And when running the metal test, I got a score of 201,256. I wanted to further test the CPU's performance, so I ran a number of different Cinebench versions. Now starting off with a slightly older version of Cinebench, Cinebench R20. And when running this test, I got a score of 7,828. I then ran Cinebench R23 and got a single core score of 1,651. I then got a multi-core score of 28,905, which gives us quite the insane ratio of 17.51. I then ran the latest version of Cinebench, Cinebench 2024. Now when running this test, I got a single core score of 123 with a multi-core score of 1916, which gives us a ratio of 15.54. I also ran the Cinebench 2024 GPU test to test the 60 core GPU in the M2 Ultra. Now when running this test, I got a score of 7,960. So after testing the GPU with Cinebench 2024, I wanted to further stress the 60 core GPU. So I then ran GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity. Now in the interest of saving time, I have calculated the average for each of these categories but as always, I will show you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 669.43 frames per second, whereas for the lower intensive tasks, it averaged 648.79 frames per second. So further testing the GPU in the M2 Ultra, I ran a number of different benchmarks from 3 Mark. Now starting off with their wildlife test, as expected, the M2 Ultra maxed this test with it averaging 60 frames per second. Now it's worth noting that I have the Mac Studio connected to Apple Studio Display, which means it's naturally going to top off at 60 frames per second. But I'd imagine that if this was connected to any higher refresh rate display, that you would get a higher score. So I then ran the wildlife stress test, which was pretty much useless, with this Mac Studio being constant across the board, with it scoring 10,020 every time the test was run. 
So of course I then ran the wildlife extreme test to see once again if this Max Studio could be put through its paces with a slightly more intense test. Now with this test I got a score of 10,020 with it once again averaging 60 frames per second. So I wanted to further test the machine so I ran the wildlife extreme stress test. Now once again it was pretty much useless running this stress test as it scored the same for each iteration that it was tested, with it scoring 10,020 across the board. So already at this point, it's clear to see that the M2 Ultra is a very powerful chip and it's also being cooled very well in this Mac Studio. I also ran the Solar Bay test from 3 Mark and got a score of 15,780, with it once again averaging 60 frames per second. I also ran the solar based stress test and once again the story is the same with it scoring 15,780 every time. I then ran Nova Bench 2. Now Nova Bench is a good general benchmark as it tests all aspects of the machine from the CPU, the GPU, the system memory, the system storage and more. And when running this test on the M2 Ultra Max Studio I got a score of 4,841. I also wanted to test the speeds of the SSDs in this Mac Studio. Now when running the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, I got write speeds of 6,271 megabytes per second and read speeds of 5,159.3 megabytes per second. And when running the Aja Systems Disk Speed Test, I got write speeds of 6,942 with read speeds of 4,378 megabytes per second. I then performed a Wi-Fi speed test and got download speeds of 305 megabits per second with upload speeds of 104 megabits per second. I also ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and got a score of 83,131. And when running Speedometer 2.0, I got speeds of 522. I also ran the V-Ray test and got scores of 18,713. I then wanted to see how the Mac Studio would perform when it comes to some basic rendering. So using Blender, I timed the render times of the classroom scene using the CPU. Now this took 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Whereas when it comes to using the 60 core GPU in the M2 Ultra, it took 58 seconds to complete. When I timed the classroom render using the CPU through Blender 4.0, it took 2 minutes and 42 seconds to complete, whereas when rendering the classroom scene using the GPU through Blender 4.0, it took 44 seconds to complete. I also timed the render of the BMW scene through Blender using the CPU, it took 1 minute and 35 seconds to complete, whereas when it comes to using the GPU, it completed it in an astounding 25 seconds. Once again timing the render of the BMW scene through Blender 4.0 using the CPU it took 1 minute and 13 seconds to complete whereas when it comes to using the GPU it did this in an impressive 19 seconds. I also ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider gaming benchmark. Now when running this benchmark using high settings with the native resolution of the Mac Studio that being 5120 by 2880 I got a score of 6464 with an average frame rate of 41 frames per second. When the resolution was lowered to 3840 by 2160 keeping the graphic settings to high I this time got a score of 10645 with an average frame rate of 60 8 frames per second. When the resolution was lowered further to full HD, that's 1920 by 1080, I this time got a score of 23,720 with an average frame rate of 151 frames per second. And I don't imagine anyone to be doing this, but once again, it's just to draw comparison. When it comes to running this benchmark at standard HD, that's 1280 by 720, it this time scored 25,181 with an average frame rate of 161 frames per second. I then timed a video export through Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off of a 5 minute 23 second video file at full HD that's 1920 by 1080 and the M2 Ultra Max Studio managed to complete this in 22 seconds. And when the resolution was increased to 4K, that's 3840 by 2160, this M2 Ultra Max Studio completed this in 54 seconds. 
which certainly is faster than the 1 minute 25 seconds it took the Mac Studio with the M2 Max to complete this particular export. I then ran a number of different graphics benchmarks from Unigen. Now starting off with the Heaven benchmark at 2560 by 1440, it got an average frame rate of 166 frames per second with a score of 4182. When the resolution was lowered to 1440 by 900, it this time scored 4401 with an average frame rate of 174.7 frames per second. When I ran the value test from Unigen benchmarking tools at 2560 by 1440, it this time scored 5270 with it averaging 125.9 frames per second. And once again, when lowering the resolution to 1440 by 900, it this time scored 5,459, with it averaging 130.5 frames per second. As always, if you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when any of my new videos go live. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and have a good one.